A growing body of research shows that seeing and hearing birds could improve our mental health. When you really think about it, it makes sense. Research and anecdotal evidence has consistently shown that spending more time in nature is associated with better mental and physical health. About understanding what are the benefits of bird songs. Recent data has shown that listening to bird songs has been associated with improved mood, alleviating symptoms of depression, anxiety, and even paranoia. Mm. In this recent study, they found that participants who listened to at least six minutes of bird noises, which included a diverse array of birds, were associated with those benefits. And so it's just a tactic that you can use to help uh, brighten your morning, uh, listening to bird noises. And for and those of us who live in New York who only hear sirens. I know, that's a part <laughs> of it. As we were talking about, being a New Yorker, you feel like bird noises kind of go away, but they don't. Uh, studies also show that if you listen and you actively listen and be present in your actively environment, listen. you can listen to those bird noises. He's absolutely right about that. The great thing about birds is that they're literally everywhere. <laughs> Whether you live in a rural part of the country or even a densely populated big city, you very likely hear songbirds chirping away outside your window. My favorite neighbor is the great horned owl that's pictured here, giving us a sultry come hither stare. He likes to hoot away in the trees near our home. As I read about corrupt politicians, mass shootings and other destruction for the show super early in the morning, I can hear him and I absolutely love it. Mr. Owl manages to put a smile on my face regardless of the terrible subject matter I'm reading about. Now, I know I'm not the only one who feels this way because several studies do indicate that many experience improved emotions simply by hearing birds. In one study, researchers asked about 1300 participants to submit reports about their environment and well being three times a day using an app called Urban Mind. Now, the researchers wanted to study the impact of birds, but the participants were not privy to that. The app also collected data about the sleep quality, subjective assessment of air quality and location details. By analyzing the data, the researchers found a significant positive association between seeing or hearing birds and improved mental well being, even when accounting for other possible explanations, such as education, occupation, or the presence of greenery and water, which have themselves been associated with positive mental health. The benefits persisted well beyond the bird encounter. If a participant reported seeing or hearing birds at one point, their mental well being was higher on average hours later, even if they did not encounter birds the next check in or at the next check in. So, in another study, participants were asked to listen to six minute audio recordings of various sounds, including traffic noise and birds. The bird sounds were divided into two different categories, diverse bird sounds, which included eight different species and less diverse bird songs that only had two birds included. Now, the researchers then had these subjects measure their emotional and cognitive states. And here are the results. Participants who listened to more diverse bird songs featuring the acoustic acrobatics of eight species reported a decrease in depressive symptoms in addition to significant decreases in feelings of anxiety and paranoia. And those who listened to less diverse bird songs, two bird species also reported a significant decrease in feelings of anxiety and paranoia. Now, unsurprisingly, for me at least, the traffic noise worsened symptoms of depressive states. Emil Stob, who's one of the authors of the study, emphasizes the healing aspects of the world around us. But a growing body of research and the ever expanding list of endangered species makes it clear that birds are in fact in trouble. They've been under threat thanks to habitat loss, diseases like avian flu, and even Floridian blueberry farmers who want to protect their bushes. No, really, they want to protect their bushes from berry loving birdies. In Florida in April, state wildlife officials charged two men with shooting and killing colorful migratory cedar wax wings, including a blueberry farmer trying to keep them off his bushes. Also in Florida, a man was charged with driving a golf cart into a flock of American black skimmers 
on the beach killing five birds because he is an awful person. And don't be fooled by those anecdotal examples because if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, the situation for birds is pretty bad. Scientists estimate more than 3 billion birds have lost, have been lost in the United States since 1970 and dozens of species are considered endangered, threatened or at risk. Some of the most at risk include the California condor, which happens to be the largest and rarest bird in the United States. According to the US Fish and Wildlife Service, there were only 561 California condors left in 2022. But believe it or not, we've made some progress in repopulating these birds because back in the 1980s, their population had already dwindled to a mere 22 birds. And the reverse is true for the island scrub jay, which can only be found on Santa Cruz Island off the state of California. At one point, there were as many as 12,000 of these vibrantly blue acorn lovers. Today, there are just 2,300 because humans actually have been doing a pretty good job destroying the small slice of land that these island scrub jays inhabit. Uh, island scrub jays have the smallest range, meaning that they exist on one small island that once had the perfect conditions for them to thrive in. Since the birds live for tasty acorns, they need plenty of oak chaparral to gather and store their tasty treats for the winter. When humans introduced non-native mammals to the island, it actually ended up decimating the ecosystem there. Luckily, conservationists have been working hard to reverse this man-made damage. Recovery of the oak chaparral is one of the big signs of habitat recovery across the Channel Islands. The island scrub jays, uh, Aphylacoma insularis, may be catalyzing that recovery. The disturbance by non-native vertebrates was slowly removed. And since then, we've witnessed this amazing recovery of the ecosystem. They like to take seeds from a tree, fly with them and hide them in the ground, which serves as food storage for times of food scarcity. And it's kind of a trick how the trees get their seeds out into the landscape. They hide up to five, 6,000 seeds per season. And when the winter isn't that bad or an animal forgets some of the seeds, the acorns that stay in the ground are effectively dispersed. Man, they're, they're burying five to 6,000 seeds per season. I mean, those are some busy birds. There are other birds under threat in the United States though. Last October, the North American Bird Conservation Initiative published its sobering state of the birds report. They found that more than half of bird species in the country are in decline. About 70 species of birds have lost at least half of their populations in the past 50 years and are poised to lose the other half in the next half century if conservation efforts are not significantly ramped up. Those 70 species are not yet listed as threatened or endangered, but are at a tipping point according to the report. And that doesn't even include the birds that have already gone extinct or have come dangerously close to being extinct, like the ivory-billed woodpecker. The woodpecker hadn't been sighted since 2004, but luckily researchers believe they spotted these beauties in Louisiana recently. Researchers with the National Avery in Pittsburgh claim that they have captured images of the ivory-billed woodpecker on motion activated trail cameras that have placed that they have placed in Louisiana. The group reportedly recorded the birds in bottomland hardwood forests. Sounds fun. And I really hope that the sighting was real. The researchers also say that by using drones to scan the treetops for the birds in 2019, they were able to capture quote numerous images of the woodpeckers. So while the US Fish and Wildlife Service wanted to declare the woodpeckers extinct in 2021, some scientists are urging them to hold off considering the latest alleged sightings. And while humans have undoubtedly caused a great deal of damage to the planet, and the wildlife around us. What makes me hopeful is how humans have also brought back some animals from the brink of extinction, like the American bald eagle.
Striani is a New York City urban park ranger sergeant. Plenty of open space for them to hunt. He's been part of a more than 20-year effort to bring the bald eagles back to New York. The birds used to be plentiful here, but pollution of the city's rivers and the pesticide DDT brought them to the brink of extinction. What happened was the eggshells got really thin from this pesticide. The eggs would break and they weren't reproducing. How dire did things get for the bald eagles here? Basically, they were almost extinct from New York State. Starting in 2001, the Parks Department relocated 20 fledgling eagles from Alaska and Wisconsin to Manhattan's Inwood Hill Park. That's Rob back in 2006 feeding the baby eagles. The U.S. government banned the use of DDT in 1972, and in recent years, more funding and resources have been put toward cleaning up New York's rivers. Now, the eagles are thriving. Just keep the eagles away from Donald Trump. Just as long as you do that, everything will be okay. Now, examples like that should give us hope. Sometimes the issue of climate change can feel so impossible and overwhelming. But we have clear examples of successful outcomes when it comes to repopulating bird populations. And that's good news. That shows that humans can have a real impact. And for all the negative stories we cover every single day that include all sorts of terrible people, we really do have to hand it to the hardworking conservationists who are going out of their way to ensure that they repopulate bird species that are on the brink of extinction or are currently endangered. I have a lot of gratitude for people like that. They give up a lot in order to ensure that they're protecting the planet and the wildlife around us. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.